So the most important thing about building a reliable track engine is keeping it cool. And that's what we're going to be working on in this episode. We are going to take you through how to install Moss's coolant reroute. The real benefit of the coolant reroute is that the thermostat is now in the back of the block. So cylinder four tends to get hot on Miata's just the way the coolant runs essentially in the front and out the front. So by forcing it to go to the back, that hot water on the back of the head will open the thermostat sooner and keep your entire engine block cooler than it would coming out of the front. So not having this up front, big benefit. So the kit comes with 99% of what you're gonna need and it's all right here. So I'm gonna run you through what it is and I'm gonna show you what else you need to finish the kit, super simple. Uh, this is the most important piece of any coolant reroute. It is the hose that goes now from the back of the head to the radiator and we'll actually run you through later why this hose we think is better than the other ones on the market. Adapter for the back of the head, a Kia water neck, actually it's Kia factory part number, block off plate for your front thermostat neck. This kit is designed to be in a streetable car so you can retain your heater core hoses and things like that. All sorts of gaskets that you're gonna need and they're the nice ones with adhesive on the back that I love. All the hardware you're gonna want uh, from stuff that bolts on to the block off plates, the reroute neck, these are the long bolts you want for that. Uh, and a bunch of other brackets and P-clamps so you can hold this hose in the car uh, against some factory mounting locations. It's a really complete kit. The one thing it does not come with, which we happen to have laying around, is a thermostat. This is nice. This is just a factory Miata uh, thermostat. It's 180 degree instead of the 195. We'll put a link to one down in the description if you're interested. Uh, I think this is a worthwhile upgrade on any Miata cooling system. I mean, why wouldn't you want it to run a little cooler? So the only change that we are going to make since we are doing track things and we're not gonna run a heater core. Uh, I went to Lowe's earlier and bought just a 3 8 NPT plug. So we'll show you how that all goes together, but we're gonna block it off. It's gonna be super simple cooling system and this car is gonna run as cold as it gets. So up next, we're gonna take you over to the block and we're gonna show you kind of the prep work you gotta do over there. Uh, we are doing it out of the car, which is kind of a cheat code for this whole setup. And the instructions that they give are actually for an in the car install. Uh, it is a little trickier, but it's possible. So really there's two things you gotta do on the back of the head and that's remove this old plate. This used to be the, you know, this is what feeds your heater core. And there is a stud that is left in the block just by design that we're also gonna remove. So I'm gonna use this tool. We'll have a link to it in the description below. It is a stud puller. It's really nice because you can remove and install studs without ruining threads. Uh, it's way better than the double nut method in my opinion. The kit I have, it's probably like one of the best tools I've bought. I use it all the time. So this is the neck that you'll remove right off the bat. This is the factory setup. 12 millimeter bolts take this out and you're left with this little stud here, which is the same on the front of the engine. Uh, we can't use that because of the, just the length of the reroute. So we're gonna, we're gonna take that out. If you don't have one of these, you're going to wanna use just two nuts, tighten them together and then back it out. Uh, this thing works like a charm. Tighten it up and then just break the nut free. Once you take it out, this is what you're left with. You won't need this again, so you can chuck it or save it or whatever. Uh, it's also the same as your intake manifold stud if you're ever in need. Uh, and then you want to clean this up. We already did when we cleaned the motor up, but make sure there's no gasket material left on this before we start installing the rest of the parts. The first step, once you've removed everything, is to put on this rear assembly. It does have to be bolted on all at once, but I'm gonna run you through what it all is. So this is the spacer neck that goes on the back of the block, uh, and it gives enough space for, as you can see, a thermostat to fit inside of that housing. I've already put the gaskets on front and rear. Since they're adhesive, it actually kind of traps the thermostat in, which is really nice. I have sprayed these with some copper tack spray, which uh, I use pretty much on every gasket I put in a car. Put a link to that down below. Uh, I find it super useful, it prevents tons of leaks. Uh, and then we're also gonna want the Kia, uh, I don't even know what you call this, the Kia water neck. So that's gonna be the whole sandwich assembly. Uh, this is what you use as your heater core port. So that's gonna face towards the exhaust side of the block. Uh, and then this is an, a spare port, which we're gonna use for a water temp sensor. And this is where the ECU water temp sensor goes. The way this bolts up, you'll see how this piece ends up and it'll all tack on together and you'll have a nice rear assembly. It's actually really simple. And we're gonna take the shorter of the two bolts that are provided and that threads in the top position. And then the lower position gets the longer bolt. These are just 12 mils, so we'll snug those up real quick. 
The torque spec for these is 16 foot pounds. So next step, uh, if you're doing this off the car, you want to do this beforehand. The instructions call that out really clear, but since we got room, we'll do it now. A uh, coolant temp sensor, this is like vital. Do not forget this piece. Uh, it's a 19 mil, and we're just gonna thread that right into this top port. This is why they want you to do it off the car. So there is a crush washer in there. Just tighten it until you crush the washer. We're gonna leave this bottom port open. We don't actually have the water temp sensor yet, but we're gonna patch this hole because we know we're not gonna use it. Lowe's Motorsports Bung, 3 MPT. There's, I'm sure there will be an Amazon link to one down below. But if you're doing a street car, you'll be installing the parts that they give you. And there you have it, that's 90% of the install. So up next is installing the coolant hose. So this is a nice preform piece. I know when I did the case swap, I had to like hunt around for different parts and hoses that would fit. This is a beautiful off-the-shelf option. It's pre-bent, you don't have to kink anything. So when you install it, the long end goes on the back of the block. This way it can reach around everything else. If you're doing this out of the car, make sure you screw this down at an angle that you can get to it in the car. So there you have it. And then this will run around to the front and tap into a factory radiator really nicely. So the one part that we are not gonna install is this blank off plate that goes on the front of your thermostat neck. So this typically, it's gonna be hard because I have a plate in there right now, would sit on the front of your block, you'd take the thermostat out and just block this off, and that removes the front water access to the radiator. Uh, since we don't need this, we are not running any of these water lines in our setup and things like that, so we don't need to retain the ports on the front of the motor. Uh, I whipped up a smaller block that actually blanks off in here, but this is a nice easy solution, so it's fast. If you're doing it in the car, you don't have to take your timing belt off, you don't have to do any of the stuff behind here. To get access to that, you just bolt this right up to here. You put a gasket in between the two that they supply. All the hardware is supplied, everything's there, bolted together, and your coolant is then rerouted. Well, from behind the camera, there's a couple things that I, I do really like about this kit. I think this hose is so key. Uh, on my car, we're running a different coolant reroute from Super Miata. And it's just one large hose that kind of snakes its way around. And it becomes a problem up front. It's designed with their radiator, which their coolant neck is much farther out. I want to say it's like four to five inches off to the side. So it's a straight shot in. Whereas everyone else, their radiator has this little offset. And it kind of creates a weird junction in my engine bay. Uh, so I'm half tempted to try to buy just the hose, which Moss has for sale on their website. You can just buy this. Big shout out to Moss for sending this kit along. Uh, we were gonna do a reroute and we weren't set on what, and we reached out to them. We met them all at Miata's at the Gap. Uh, super great people, and they are totally on board with what we're doing here, so we really appreciate the support. If you're seeing us for the first time, uh, this is just one small part to a very large puzzle that's sitting uh, behind us, mostly apart at the moment. We're putting together a, a track car this winter to go out and rip on over the summer. So if Miatas are your interest and you want to see us highlight other parts or just generally what it's like to put together a track car, follow along. We've got a minty bay right now that I cannot wait to put this engine That's in uh, and, and yeah, and do. So subscribe, follow along. Uh, it's all about track car stuff this winter, so stay tuned. To install this blank off or this uh, spacer block, this is gonna go with, be with. Wow. <laughs> it's all good. <clears throat> From the top. <laughs>